process as a simple process like the four steps model here from four steps to the future. Um, it is on the, on the surface and at the basic level, fairly simple and straightforward. A lot can go into it and you can also use it very quickly. And in the four steps model like this one, um, literally four basic steps. And step one is the past, asking how and why has your issue, your industry changed in the past? Step two takes you to looking around at the environment right now and asking what are these signals? What are the weak signals even of future change that we think we can already detect now? Step three, looking at the future, is taking all of that stuff from steps one and step two and bringing it together to forecast different possible futures, building scenarios. And then step four, which is aspiration, takes all of that stuff and says, okay, now that we've gone through all of this and all of these trends, emerging issues, cycles, all of these big disruptive changes we possibly talked about, after having looked at all of that stuff, now with that information, right, with a little bit of that inspiration, what do we want to do? What do we want to achieve? So step four in aspirations, when we're talking about goals and objectives, when it, it's where we're talking about the future that we want to shape and create. And what does this look like? Well, it can look like things like this. Right? So step one, we're looking at history, we're doing some historical analysis, we're looking at cycles and patterns over time within your issue, we're looking at what things have driven change, what things have prevented change, how have the institutions responded, how have various stakeholders responded in the past, what, you know, from where did we usually get new up and comers, new challengers to whatever it is we do, right? How did incumbents fare over time, right? We're going through history to try and understand those dynamics. And then in step two, right, the present, again, we're trying to assess the present. We're looking at all those signals of change. And so we're doing emerging issues analysis. We're looking at, hey, what are the new technologies that are maybe very experimental or crazy sounding today? Where are they? What do they promise to do? Right. We're looking for policy issues, things that two, three, five years down the road might be incredibly important policy or regulatory issues that nobody is yet focusing on or looking at. Right. It's also looking at you know, what new technology, I mean, what new uh, ideas, philosophies, operating models, business models, new concepts, ideas that today might be fringe or sort of crazy sounding, but if they mature and they grow up, could become mainstream. And if they do, could have a big impact on the shape of your issue. And in that, you're looking at trends and other things. And again, you're taking all of that stuff. And in step three, looking at the future, you're creating scenarios, multiple scenarios, looking at multiple possible futures. And if you think about that cone again, that cone of uncertainty, right, that range of futures, scenarios are where we are essentially mapping different pathways out across that emerging landscape. And thus scenarios are a very typical and very common method and why you'll see it so often in foresight work, right? This is how some of that, that uh, foresight work can look to us.